So what is the difference between this Quran and this Quran? Uh, that one's Spanish translation and that one's English translation? Now I've got another question for you. What's the difference between this Bible and this Bible? What, uh, this one's English and this one's Spanish too? Yes, but no. This is the Roman Catholic one and this is the Protestant one. What? Aren't they the same? No. This Bible has more books than this Bible. You mean, these are not just two different translations but two different versions? Uh, yeah. And not only that, these are the two current versions of the Bible. So you mean, not only two different groups of Christians agree on what goes in the Bible or not, you mean to tell me that there are current versions, different versions, even to today? Well, yeah, they're, they're even still debating to this very day upon which version they're going to use, whether they're going to accept rejected past manuscripts or to even reject manuscripts that have already been chosen. So then, who decides? Quite frankly, the criteria is whatever the early Christians and church chose goes. Gospels lived and died according to their adherence to early church doctrine. Quite frankly, no one even knows where Hebrews came from, but the church chose it still. How did they get away with it? The Holy Spirit inspired early Christians to write and pick the Gospels that were true. And we know this because the Gospels written by and picked by the early Christians said that the Holy Spirit will guide and inspire them. And we know this must be true, because as I said before, the Holy Spirit inspired the early Christians to pick and write the Gospels that are true. I don't get it. God's logic, as written in the Bible, every word of which is true. And we know every word is true because the Bible says that the Bible is true. <laughs> and if you remember from earlier in this sentence, every word of the Bible is true. Now, are you following me here or are you some kind of mindless zealot? Ay, 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 mi cabeza es muy mal. No te preocupes. No one else gets it neither. Does that mean you have to? Yes. Blind faith. Oh dear, blind faith, the curse of religions. Unfortunately, because it th the, the text cannot be proven, cannot be shown that Jesus actually said it, or did it, or taught it, they have to bring in blind faith. So all the people have confidence that the church was right and the early Christians were right for picking the Gospels that appear in the Bible we have today. And the problem is, that the earliest manuscripts only go up to 400 years after the Jesus. And not only this, but even, the, even 200 years after Jesus, when there are different fragments, where people claim that if you put all these fragments together, you'll come up with the modern Bible, ignore one simple fact. No manuscript is alike to any other manuscript. You will not find any two matching manuscripts in the history of Christianity up until 400 to 500 AD. Explain. Not only are the, the Gospels selected in a dubious manner, but even the Gospels that are selected, um, there are different versions, different manuscripts, different texts of them. For example, in some uh, manuscripts, according to this, the earliest and most reliable manuscripts and other ancient witnesses do not have John 7.53 to 8.11. Other verses that were put in were the verse on the Trinity, where it said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three witnesses, one in heaven. The other one is the verse on adultery, where Jesus says, let the, first, uh, let the person who has no sin cast the first stone. These texts have been removed from the Bible or added in, in other versions, depending on which current version you bought at your local shop. So, so not only are they picking which Gospels to put in, there's even different versions of the same manuscripts and Gospels? Well, get this. Amongst the early Christians, there were divergences of, of opinion. Unfortunately, the church won out, but the other Christian communities include those of Jesus' hometown, Nazareth. According to the, the doctrines of the Nazarenes, they never believed Jesus was God, but believed he was only a prophet. And they have a gospel which is now lost, but was in the, in the records of the church, but it has been burnt. And then there's the Basilians who didn't even believe Jesus was crucified. And there's even a gospel which says that Jesus was substituted by Simon of Cyrene before his crucifixion and that Jesus watched on with his disciples as Cyrene was uh, crucified in his place. So 
what happened to these gospels? Well, I asked the church that a lot of these heretical texts were burnt. We don't even have the originals, or we have other records of these early Christian communities, apart from the gospel I mentioned, which um, is still existent, but is regarded as fabrication by the church. Of course, the Holy Spirit must have come into them and told them this. Oh, so this is different with the Quran, obviously. Yeah, because you see, it might be translated in Spanish, but the Arabic is the same. Just like this one, translated in English, Arabic, still the same. There are different translations of this, but there is only one version in the Arabic text. And history even confirms this book. Exactly. You see, Islam needed the Quran preserved and accurate from day one. It is the basis of an entire civilization and state. Its rules and, and uh, regulations need to be implemented. So great attention was paid to preserving it. And the whole fact that in the Quran, even if you were to change one word of it, it would be instantly noticeable because of the inimitable nature of the style of the Quranic language. Any change would be instantly noticeable by anyone reading it. And not only this, but by the fact that thousands of people were taught the Quran in, in the same classes. If one person made a mistake, he was corrected, therefore ensuing uniformity. And to this day, we have the preserved copy of this Quran authentic as it was before and no archaeological evidence ever was has been found today to show that there was otherwise as it was said and not only that but there exists no different schools of thought in Islam no different sects of the Islamic faith that have a different version of the Quran it does not exist therefore this Quran was preserved from day one and God through Muhammad Sallallahu ensured that the revelation was safe from the scribes and the people who were in power. Therefore, the Quran is something autonomous and independent from any political power and from any scholarly power or religious power because the Quran is preserved and no one can change it. So it can be free to say the unpalatable, but will still be there because it cannot be changed to its, suit its current society. So it will, the Quran will not be corrupted to suit modernism. Its interpretations can be, can be um, um, changed, but the original text remains the same, leaving any scholar free to pick it up and go back to its roots. But isn't the Bible the authentic word of God? Well, actually, no. It's the word of interpreters, of scholars of the word of God. Initially, the sayings of Jesus would probably have been the word of God. But over time, in gospels such as the gospel according to John, the gospel according to Mark, the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Luke, these gospels are according to these people. It clearly shows it's just interpretation. It's interpretation of records which cannot be verified independently of the life of Jesus. So all this is a human book. It's a book about humans, for humans, and written with, with the just testimony of humans, not of God. So this is not the Word of God, although it might have been have, uh, or have some fragments of the Word of God somewhere in it. But we don't know. We don't know what Jesus said, for sure. We don't know what Moses said, for sure. In the chapter which Moses meant to write, it says, and Moses lived on until a certain age and then died. Would Moses write that about himself? Does that sound like someone who wrote this? No. Moses didn't write it. People wrote it after him. And that's what we say. But this is different to the Quran. You see, the Quran, we didn't write our commentaries into the book. We read our commentaries underneath it, on the side of it, and we delineate it. This is a commentary, this is the word of man. It is the interpretation of man. But the text is the word of God. It cannot be violated, it cannot be distorted, it cannot be manipulated. Therefore, this is why we say the Quran is the literal word of God and not the interpretation. And the interpretations of the Quran are kept separate. And the interpretations of the life of Prophet Muhammad are kept separate. So it's like, we can't trust these books, it's like, it's like we need a new revelation. But wait a second, we do! And Alhamdulillah, we are truly blessed. We have the Quran now. And to, from this day of judgment, we shall have this book. And nothing will ever happen to it, because God has even promised to look after it.
Woe then unto those who write down with their own hands something which they claim to be divine writ, and then say, This is from God, in order to acquire a trifling gain thereby. Woe then unto them for what their hands have written, and woe unto them for what they may have gained. In summary, the Bible is no longer the Word of God, but the Quran still is. From Isa, from Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum.